Welcome to Knitting Keeps Me Sane with Dr. Sander <laughs> and Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so it is a bright and sunny and warm August I 1st. See my face. I know. It. Well, you can. The sun is too bright. I know. I look like a vampire. A little washed out, but whatever. It's bright. I, I, I can see. <laughs> Why are you red? Blue. <laughs> All right. So anyway, <laughs> I cannot realize I'm sitting on. The okay. So we are going to talk knitting and yarn and. I'm so surprised when you said knitting. I know I never do that, do I? Yeah, on your knitting No. No. So there is my yeah. daughter Sorsha, who is probably not for much longer going to be shorter than me. Okay. <laughs> I'm coming back now. And then Angus, who is doing a really good job potty training. Are you doing a good job potty training? Yep. Yeah, you're a good boy. And then Evie's over there overseeing everything. But. We have a fairly, fairly full episode today. I actually have completed a few things, and we've done a few things. So let's get to it. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. So I'm going to send these ones away to go do their thing while I talk about knitting. Okay. So let's get on with some finished objects first. So I actually have two finished objects. So I had talked about doing a uh, test knit for Telly Bean Knits and uh, she had made this pattern uh, called True Nature Tea and this is that tea. So it is cropped it is a little bit oversized. Um, this is the third size in the pattern. And you can see here the, let's see, the sort of the little cables that run up here. It's got some wide lace. Um, and it is absolutely gorgeous. It is um, knit out of, um, Yarn Over London. It was a one of a kind uh, colorway that I had two skeins of. I got it a couple of years ago. It's been in stash a while and uh, it was one of the options I gave my oldest daughter for knitting this sweater for her. And since finishing it, uh, and on like the 15th, so you know, two weeks ago, she's worn it a lot since then. And you can see the yarn is holding up really well. Um, so she's worn it out a lot and this yellow color with the warm uh, peaches and brown and gold and, and red in there is just in her wheelhouse. It's just, it really looks good on her. And I had, when I bought the color, I, I loved it and I thought, oh, I'll make some socks or something because yellow is not, is not a color that, that I can wear at all but it looks great on her so yay I was actually able to make a garment out of it instead of just socks and she loves it uh, she's it, it just really looks good on her um, but this sweater was uh, so it's in fingering weight yarn and the the lace yoke it's top down short sleeves and it really, it used not all of the two skeins. So with two skeins, you're safe for the third uh, for the third size. If you're gonna lengthen it, uh, you probably wanna get more. Um, but the yardage was pretty appropriate uh, for the size three. I was spot on engaged. I was really worried while I was knitting it because it did look like I was, had that I was way, way off. But with blocking it, it worked out perfectly. And I, I didn't even aggressively block it. I just let the yarn bloom the way that it, it wanted to. And um, it just ended up 
hit engage. Um, and, and surprisingly, not just uh, stitch gauge, but row gauge as well, which I rarely ever hit. Um, so <laughs> that was a happy surprise. So I, it was a fun little knit. Um, the hems have this twisted rib, uh, have this twisted rib, which is fabulous. Um, both at the neckline, it has short row shaping to raise the back and lower the front. Um, and then it has that same twisted rib at the bottom. And it was just a lot of fun to knit. It took me, um, to completely finish the sweater, it, it did in fact take me four weeks. Um, and I pretty much only knit on that. And I did have a lot of time where I wasn't able to knit with a teething baby. And um, so if you're a faster knitter, it's gonna go faster. If you have more knitting time, it'll go faster. But so I think it's fairly reasonable to say you could knit this even being a fingering weight sweater in a month, no problem for uh, one of the lower uh, sizes, one, two, three, maybe four. Um, over that, you'll probably take a little longer, but I mean, for a cropped sweater, that's, that's still pretty good. Um, so I enjoyed it. It was a fun test knit. It was well organized as always. Um, go look at uh, Telly Bean Knits patterns. They're, they're really well written and really creative, and I think you'll enjoy it. I, I certainly did. I've already recommended it to a couple of people. So that is finished object number one. And as that comment implies, I have a finished object number two. <laughs> so actually this is um, a pair of socks. While I was knitting on this sweater, that little cutie you saw earlier, my little Angus, he looked at that and he said, you knit? Yeah. You knit Rara? That's what he calls his older sis oldest sister. So yes, I'm knitting a sweater for Rara. Me knit? You want to knit? No. Okay. You want me to knit something for you? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. What do you want? So uh, I asked him what he wanted and he says, socks. Okay. Do you know what color you want? Blue. Blue socks. So I made him little shorties because that's, he only wears short socks anyway. Ah, you can probably tell they've already gotten some wear. Um, these are the rye socks from, uh, I think it's tin can nets, tin can nets. Yeah. Uh, if it's not, I'll put the name up here. Um, and the yarn that I used is Unplanned Peacock Studio. I had bought some yarns in blues uh, last year to do some knitting for that little girl over there, yes! And um, I have some things on the needles for her in those blues, but then I got distracted by other knitting. Uh, and I have something on the needles for her in, in a different color, but I was looking through yarn for Angus's socks and he grabbed this and was like, this is it. And he pushed it to me <laughs> and he said this. Okay. All right. That was an easy decision. So this is a worsted, uh, this is a worsted weight sock, uh, worsted weight yarn. And it's the colorway is called Crater Lake from Unplanned Peacock Studio and I must say I really enjoy knitting these socks the yarn is uh, the yarn do you need out of there hang on okay we're back and so here's Debbie Teal Girl say hi okay so this yarn, as I was saying, is just absolutely really soft and luscious and luxurious. And the color is just, um, it's just gorgeous. I just absolutely love that blue. It's not quite as sapphire as this is looking. It, it's more toward the, 
I don't want to say gray, but compared to what I see on the screen, yes. Um, but it is really a, just a really, s against my navy, I don't know. <laughs> it's not quite navy, it's sort of a purpley, more of a midnight um, blue. But it's, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and it's really soft. I'm probably going to make a couple more out of these just because I have the yarn left. Um, um, just to give him a couple more like these. So he's got like four of these rather than just two. Um, but he has worn these a lot. Uh, given his choice, he'll wear these instead of his regular Bombas. Um, loves them. Um, and each sock took basically a day of my knitting time, <laughs> which admittedly is not much, but uh, it takes, you know, one worsted child size sock shorty of the rye is one day for me. Um, so those were my two finished knitting projects. <laughs> She's kind of out of it today. I don't know what's up with her. What's up with you? What's up with you? Um, so that leads us now to works in progress. And it's over here. Let's look at this one first, uh, just because it's on the top of my pile. So, it, ah yes, my um, moon shawl, circular shawl. Um, hey babe. Okay, so here's where we are on this. I had just started this top color um, last time I showed it. Um, oh wait, that's the back. Here's the front. Um, <laughs> um, and I just keep knitting on that. Um, that's my advent project. Um, and I've, I've talked about it before, so I'll just, um, uh, let you look that up again. Um, let's see. So that was, oh my, who was that? Um, see, now that I have pulled it up, I feel like I have to go and tell you what it is. And I was unprepared. Um, it was one of my favorite advents. It was, oh my, why can't I? All right, we're just going to have to pause while I figure out the information. Hang on. Okay. So I knew it had to be one of my favorites, um, but it's six and seven fibers, Advent 2023 uh, set. And uh, I am just loving it. The It's on the, I think it's the Milo base. Let's see. Um, yeah, the Milo base, Hi. which is so soft. And if you haven't used six and seven fibers, I highly recommend that you give her a try because it's really nice. So uh, the theme for that advent was literary women. And so um, we're up to uh, the, that, that color, which I forget who that was. I'll have to look that up. But um, when I do the final, like the final show of what that is, I'll go through who those are. But that was, it's just a fun, as I go through and I'm knitting each color, it's good to, you know, I start the color thinking about that author and maybe reading um, one of the books that uh, w either was listed for the character that's in the book or for the author, and then I'll either pick a pick a book, um, and and that's just sort of a fun fun way to sort of supplement my reading. Um, so that's the Waxing Moon Shawl by Emily O'Brien, and there we go. Um, so the next one that I'm going to show you, um, hi, 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 you can grab my knitting again. She is notorious, notorious. Um, I've got a little thing here that she's grabbing on to. Okay. All right. We're going to hold off on that one. Okay. We're going to talk about this one, which is for this little girl. This is the bottom of the peacock dress. Um, ah, oh, where'd it go in? Um, here we go. So, 
this this is showing the color really well um, the this is the bottom of the dress the lowest the first lace pattern repeat has been done and um, I'm on now the second chart and the um, so it's so it's called the peacock dress by Pernille Larson I'm hope I, I hope I said that right but probably not and I'm using the knitting for olive merino in the um, ah, petroleum colorway and I really have been enjoying that the chart is not uh, bad to follow at all um, I just sort of get set on the first row and then I go and then the next row is pretty intuitive thereafter um, mostly knitting the nets and purling the pearls um, occasionally in where you have some yarn overs you'll you'll do a you'll start that yarn over as a knit and then purl it another yarn or so up another row or so up um, but it's it's really it's really fast and easy once I get going I just can do that row um, as it's set and so that had just I, I had just done the two garter ridges last time I showed it and that's how much I've gotten done since then and um, I am making the whoa hang on everything cool okay <laughs> okay um so i made a a berry breakfast cake this morning with our blackberries and uh that uh, that's what she was on the hunt for so um so i've really been enjoying that pattern um but it's also making me think of some other patterns that i'd like to do for some lace dresses for her um but that dress i hadn't decided yet whether i was going to do the 12 month or 18 month size um because they start out with the same stitch count and um it changes later on which chart you next go to or how many times you repeat certain charts to change uh, the size to lengthen it and um, I've decided I am going to just go ahead and do the size 12 month she'll uh, be 12 months in December she's um, hi, hi, hi. she's uh, a little on the slight side so it should last her a little while and then she can still just wear the dress as a tunic later on and that totally works for me this is my favorite dress Lilith here wore that when she was a baby, didn't you? Yes, I did. You did. Oh, and by the way, she's seven months old. Yes, yeah, she is seven months old. Uh, she just turned seven months old. Okay, so, so knitting this, I'm starting to think about another pattern that I would like to design for a dress for her, um, but uh, <laughs> it's not like I have infinite knitting time, so I don't know if I'll get to it, but I'll try to write it up. <laughs> I take it that's for the cake. <laughs> yeah, all right. She likes my berry cake. Anyway, um, so next, all right, I'm gonna show this next. So we, after I finished that sweater, I came back to one that I'm knitting for me and it's the, um, Blanking on the name, I am just, I swear, my brains are not in my head most of the time. Uh, at least not where my knitting is concerned. There, Rocket Tea, there we go, by uh, Tannis Fiber Arts. Um, and I'm using the Rowan Kid Silk Haze in the Black Current, and then the Sweet Georgia Yarns Tough, Lugs, Tough Love Sock in the Rainbow Sprinkles. And I have done... I finished the neckline, I've done the sleeves, and now I'm just knitting the body. Rainbow. <laughs> yeah, rainbow sprinkles. Anyway, I was knitting on this. I had picked it, just picked it up again after it setting for a while. And I'm just knitting and knitting and knitting away on this row here. And I noticed a little something. Thank you, sweetie. I don't know if you can tell, this row versus this row is one row off. So there are eight row repeats, but somehow I cut this row at seven 
rows instead of eight. And I'm so angry, I can't even possibly, I am spitting nails. It's just, uh, yeah, not cool. And my husband is like, oh, you'll never know. I will know. Do you know who you're talking about? Because I will know. I will see it. So this has gotten put in time out <laughs> until I can decide whether I am going to fix it, yes I will, or if I'm going to let it go and allow it to be imperfect. Um, and then after I've decided what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm just waiting for the energy to be able to pick it back up again. <laughs> she just finished her berry cake and she's very happy. Okay, so it just has to sit and time out until my heart is uh, not so wounded about the about that project. So there we go. <gasps> Where'd you go? Just a minute, I'll <laughs> put her in a play area. <laughs> okay, so carrying on with all the works in progress. Um, the next one is the My Favorite Brent Blanket by the Bakery Bears. And um, I am almost caught up <laughs> to the last video. And I... Um, the most recent stripe that they had described working was for August, and it's the last one of this middle section, the last stripe of this middle section. And um, so I had wanted to get kind of ahead of it months ago, and that just never happened. So now, now is my chance <laughs> to get caught up to the episode and be ready for the next one. I was keeping up on the episodes really really well until recently but <laughs> um you know i mean sue me i have seven children and a life and other knitting and whatever um but i've been really enjoying this knit and uh, i've been using up stash and just trying to make it look seasonal to me um and it's gotten big enough that when i'm working on it lately and Angus is sitting next to me on the couch. He grabs the end that I'm not working on and pulls it over himself when he's kind of cool at night. So he loves it already. So I think it's working. So I have worked um, uh, six and a half repeats of this last color, of this last stripe. And um, let me show you what I have. Let me put this over here. Um, so this, so here is starting with January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and now August. And so it does kind of look, bleh. you know, I'm serious when I have the ponytail. All right. <laughs> so you can tell here that it does, um, it does start out very cool looking and then it warms up, you know, brightens up to new stuff and then it gets really, really, you know, very hot looking colors. So uh, June, July and August, you can see here. So um, this is very peachy. This is a, it's really not showing up very well. It's really sort of a, a hot pink and the green. And I think it's because, you know, the two together are very difficult because they're um, opposite colors, but when I, I, I look at it here and it, it really does, um, I mean, it shows off, you know, really how, uh, warm and red it is while still having the, um, Pacific Northwest evergreen in the background. So, um, this is what it looks like. You can, really tell that this is, you know, it's a beautiful rectangle, um, in the making, almost done, and, uh, 
So the next colors will be kind of warm as well, but starting into some of the more burnished colors of fall um, in September, but it'll have some more blue skies. Um, so yeah, so August is almost done. Um, and I've really been enjoying this blanket a lot. And <laughs> I'm trying to think of whether I want to do another one um, and just go purely stash and just do some sort of rainbow or I don't know. I don't know. Like I, I've just been enjoying it. So I, I may just continue on. Um, and honestly, I may just take colors that I like that go in together. And instead of you holding two strands of different yarns together, I may just double strand the same one and run out as the, the yarn goes. Uh, and then just continue on with the colors uh, and with the numbers of the stitches to the end. Um, just because it's two yarns of fingering um, and they're approximately using, using estimating about 50 grams uh, skeins each. So it's 100 grams per stripe. And it's not quite getting there. Little Miss Crawlin' Bitty Girl, what art thou doing? Anyway, um, so I don't know, I haven't decided. And I have some some DK stash uh, leftovers that it, maybe I'll just use up some D, uh, DK uh, leftovers for a, a scrappy version of this. But it's really been quite fun. Uh, and not mindless at all, um, just potato chippy, I guess is the right word it's i've been enjoying it but it, and it's been kind of addictive but um i've been happy to pick it up and happy to put it down to do other things so it's not i don't feel compelled like i have to knit on it um like i do when i have charts or like i have to finish this row or i have to finish this chart so that pressure isn't there but on the other hand uh because i know i can pick it up and put it down, pick it up and put it down without worrying about where I am in the, in the pattern. That's been really great. Um, the middle section has had that one row where there is a pattern and that's been a blessing and a curse, I guess. <laughs> um, so maybe if I do it again, maybe I won't do that. Um, on the other hand, I've been thinking about picking up and doing a, a V stitch crochet blanket so maybe I'll do that instead but I've really been enjoying knitting these these little lap blankets they're just a lot of fun so um so yeah so that's what I've been working on I have some other works in progress that I just haven't worked on so I'm not going to show those um and so those are the works in progress now I do have I do have some stash enhancement. <laughs> um, so hang on. Okay, so um, recently I paid a visit to a yarn shop in Spokane, Washington, Paradise Fibers. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. This is a great store. And um, I have ordered from them online before to get, I think it was the Let Lopi, um, and I stopped in. <laughs> okay, so let's, let me show first this. Um, Coastal Cotton, the Queensland Collection. Um, it's 100% cotton. This is uh, made in India. Um, it's hundred percent cotton and I have two skeins of this sort of a blood orange color and a slightly to the purple pink color. It's kind of showing up pretty well there. Um, these were picked out by my, uh, by that little whirling dervish you saw and, uh, Lilith and Angus. Uh, so I'm going to knit them something. I don't even know what they just, I let them pick out something and they just, this is what they wanted. I don't, I don't even know. Um, part of me is just thinking maybe I'll knit them, uh, or crochet them 
uh, little placemats for their places at the table that are just theirs, just theirs. And I had suggested that to them and uh, Lilith loved the idea. My sweet girl was like, yeah, yeah, I like that. So I think I might just crochet up um, a placemat for each of them in this. Cause I don't typically knit with cotton because because it doesn't give the way that that uh, wool does, it tends to hurt my hands, and I don't want to do anything that hurts my hands and impairs my ability to craft at all. Um, but crocheting with cotton is not a problem, so I probably will crochet um, a little placemat for them, which they would love, and they can say this is my spot and and set it where they want, and uh, they would like that. So got that for them. Um, and then Sorsha, the other whirling dervish you saw, picked out this. This is apple blossom. Um, I'm sorry, almond blossom, which is a very soft pink color. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with this. She has a pair of fingerless mitts. And I'm pretty sure they're actually in this color. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but she's been sort of collecting the idea that she wants more fingerless knits and in some different, uh, and in some different sort of styles. Uh, so she might just want another like that in this. I don't know. Uh, or I had to go with it. I don't know. I'll, I'll see. And um, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, hang on. All right, sorry. <laughs> um, little Biddy there has uh, been crawling and is trying to cruise. <sighs> so anyway, we're having to watch her on that. Um, so the rest of my haul from Paradise Fibers. <laughs> okay, I have been looking for just the right blue for color work sweaters, both for uh, Evie and for myself because I love blue and white together. It's my favorite combination and I have um, another blue and white combination sweater uh, for color work that I have in stash and I have it set away. I just haven't knit it yet but I um, am not dipping into that but I wanted to do a color works dress for her but I couldn't find just the right blue found just the right blue. And a white to go with it. Cones. Cones, people. Cones. I, I, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Isn't that just the most magnificent thing together? I mean, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. This is just, it doesn't get any better than knitting from cones, especially for uh, long, like adult garments too, because everything, you don't have to stop and start skeins. You just, it's all one skein. Like, oh, oh, I should do another Hitofude. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. But again, that would just be one color, but not in this. Um, so I have, there was a dress that I had wanted to do for, I think it was Lilith but I didn't have the time or the energy and then I got caught up in other projects and then by the time I came back to okay maybe I have the mojo for this sweater the the size I would have had to knit her would just not have been as fun for me at that time um, and now I could knit you know a size two or four of course it wouldn't fit her um, but now the pattern is not intricate, intricate enough for what I want. So I'm designing a color work dress. In this, ah! 
okay. So, <laughs> so that's exciting. Um, and then, you know I love green. You know I love green. I love green. I couldn't decide between greens. This one is looking bluer on camera. Oh, there it goes. Okay, it's a very fur green kind of color and it's amazing. It's amazing, okay, woo, okay. Now the color just goes back to looking blue. Again, a cone, and I'll tell you about the yarn in a minute, but then I love this color as well. And will it adjust, will it adjust, will it adjust? Eh. It's a very turquoisey, emeraldy green. So it's not really coming up properly on there. Let's see. Okay, so it's a turquoisey, tealy green. If I put the two together, wow, they look almost identical. They look not very much alike in real life. <laughs> they look identical here. They really are not. Uh, maybe if I, <laughs> they're looking blue. <laughs> All right, well, I'll see if I can get a, a better color to put on here. Anyway, um, this is a turquoise and this is a fur green and I love them both very much. Um, but anyway, so that was um, what I got. And so the yarns are, so this turquoise color is called Deep Sea. It is by Brown Sheep Company, 100% wool, um, nature spun fingering. Um, and this is a one pound cone. And so then this fur green is called Mallard, like the Mallard duck. The blue is called Blue Boy. And then the white is this just natural, um, natural. So it's a very, very nice, uh, creamy white. So I have four cones. I was not gonna be stash enhancing this year principles. Um, <laughs> and I've been doing a really good job up to this point of knitting a ton of stuff from stash without buying, without buying to supplement a current project or anything like that. And then one, two, three, four cones. And then, and then, and then, yeah. So this, so the Malabrigo uh, Rios for my daughter. It's an Aaron weight fingering crochet projects, a ton of uh, fingering knitting sweaters. So yeah, I have, <laughs> I lost my mind, but you know what? Uh, I don't care. Like this is what I do for, this is my hobby. This is my one and only hobby aside from raising children. Um, aside from, you know, pulling my hair out. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's great. So it was really nice. It was really worth that. Um, it's just, it's just wonderful. So a lot of joy there. Um, and a lot of projects are going to be cast on <laughs> in the near future. Hi, yeah. She laughs because her mama laughs, huh? Um, so that's, that's everything. Finished objects, works in progress, um, and yarn stash enhancements. Um, so that's all I have to say about all of that. So life stuff. Um, you can see I cut my hair. I love it. I just, uh, I've just been really busy this morning. So I just pulled it back into a, into a ponytail. Uh, that's how you know I'm serious. <laughs> did some baking this morning. We did some school, um, did some outdoor things. Um, and, uh, so I'll probably, you know, you'll see it styled, but it's shoulder length now, whereas it had been most of the way down my back before. And I love it. And the curls are, are, uh, up and proud again. So that's nice. <laughs> 
Yeah, you got it. Hang on. Okay, so the other big thing is that we <laughs> took a family vacation and we went to a theme park. We went to Silverwood uh, theme park in uh, outside of a toll, a toll, whatever, Idaho, uh, near Coeur d'Alene. And uh, we stayed in Coeur d'Alene and uh, had a fantastic time. So we drove um, in one day to uh, Coeur d'Alene. We stopped in Spokane and uh, visited this one park that had a carousel and the kids loved that. They loved that, didn't they? Um, did they love it? Did they love it? And um, then we went to the... What? <laughs> what? Hey there, Spider-Man. <laughs> what else am I supposed to wear? <laughs> um, and so we went on a ton of rides. She didn't go on any, of course. Um, although we did ride a train doing this. <laughs> Is that your brother? <laughs> you love your brother. Is he crazy? Yes. Okay. Oh, no problem. <laughs> um, and so at this theme park, there were tons of just crazy roller coasters that the older three got to ride on, and they had a great time. And then uh, the youngest two um, got to ride on some little ones, uh, and then she just did the train ride with me. Uh, and then some of the other kids, we did this train ride around the park talking about the Old West in Idaho and in the area and the mining and the wilds and nature and all that. So it, it was a lot of fun. Um, but during the train ride, part of me was like, is Briar Rabbit going to come? <laughs> I don't know. It's a throwback from my childhood talking about Briar Rabbit. But anyway, um, that was fun. And the... Uh, during the last sort of half of the day. <laughs> you are, you're awesome. Um, the last half of the day, I, uh, so my husband and I sort of divided and conquered the children. I took the ones who couldn't go on the crazy roller coasters and he took the ones who did. Um, and uh, then we sort of met up periodically for like food and like uh, at one point I traded the last four hours or so of the day we traded children and I got to go on some of the crazy roller coasters too and um, it was a lot of fun <laughs> so and then the next day we we drove back and we stopped at the Paradise Fibers in Spokane and a great store friendly uh, people there. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, everybody felt really welcome. You know, some stores, they don't like it if you bring your kids in because um, they wander and um, my kids certainly weren't 100% hands off, but they also didn't pull anything apart either. So, and uh, so um, they were really, I thought, well behaved and they were just really warmly welcomed uh, at the store. And uh, so now <laughs> I would say they're probably my number one favorite now. Um, so I will be ordering from them. Uh, anytime that I make any yarn choices, I will have to check with them first. Uh, it was really, really nice to uh, go to a yarn store where you go in and the people were just, just friendly and there was no pressure to buy, no pressure to um, hurry up and make your selection and get out, and no, you know, just no pressure. They were just friendly. We chatted a bit. They chatted with my husband. They chatted with some of the kids, and um, yes, and we talked about yarn and knitting and things. And so it really was just like a oh, oh, it really was just like a. a it was just like a greeting place for fiber people. So if you're in Spokane, go there. They're fabulous, friendly, knowledgeable, and just no pressure, just fun, just uh, very welcoming, and uh, you'll love it. It's great. It was a great place.
Yes. So, um, there were lots of sights to be found on the drive home. We did stop and do a little hike. Oh, we stopped at a couple of playgrounds. Um, and then we got home and a day later the fire started uh, by Diablo Lake. So we're getting some of that smoke in, but it's not too bad right now, but it's not great. Oh, oh. Um, so, um, but at least when we drove by there, it was clear and beautiful and hopefully they'll get that fire um, under control. If people would stop flying their drones over the fire, you don't need to see it. Fire rescue needs in. That's my soapbox, there you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, they had a little more information. Somebody was flying their drone over the, the fire area and so fire rescue weren't able to bring their choppers in um, to all of the areas that they needed to drop water and, and supplies and whatever. And uh, so that allowed the fire to expand uh, an area more than they wanted it to just because they were avoiding unsafe conditions for uh, the pilots and the passengers for the aircraft. Because the last thing you need is to crash a, a helicopter because somebody's flying their drone. Um, so anyway, um, we're going to have a hot week. We're going to be in the pool. <laughs> we're going to get the kitty pool out. The kitty pool. And put our feet in. And it'll be nice. Um, thankfully, we've got the air conditioning running. Hopefully, you can't really hear it too much. Um, and iced coffee. So, there's that. So hopefully you're enjoying your crafty projects and oh, oh, and uh, your little ones um, and having a good summer. Thanks for listening. Bye. Okay, not bye yet. <laughs> I forgot. My ducks are crazy and stupid. They're crazy and they're a little bit dumb. We had to repair part of the pool. And that meant putting a waterproof uh, pond liner in it that was black. Freaked them out. They won't go near it. So we put a blue tarp over it that, that we had used with them before. And uh, they'll go near it now, but they still won't go in it. So, used to be their favorite thing ever. And now they won't go near it. They're a little bit meh. Um, the other thing we did with the ducks is we got a new watering system where I have this plastic uh, tub that I drilled holes in so they can stick their head in, get the water, and flush out their nostrils and not spill the water everywhere all over their pen. And that has been really good. They were afraid of that initially, but then the next day they were like, yeah, this is cool. And so, <laughs> so they're cool with that now, so I'm happy. But I'm just hoping they get back to enjoying their pool again. Hopefully today they'll, instead of just going close to the pool, hopefully they'll go in it now that they're not quite so afraid of it. <laughs> anyway, that's what's going on with the homestead. We've had some berries from the garden. Um, and so I've been starting to bake more with that. We had some good tomatoes and had BLTs. So starting to get some food from the homestead. <laughs> um, let's see, is there anything else before I sign off prematurely again? I'm doing some manicured flower planting. <laughs> That's Man lawn maintenance, I guess. Um, the schooling has been going really well. We've been doing some uh, cool advanced math with my oldest and uh... <laughs> All right. I guess that's all there is. <laughs> all right. Now we can say bye. Now we can say bye. Say bye. Oh, bye. <laughs>